welcome everyone. Um, this is our uh, September 1st Planning Commission meeting. Um, we'll take a moment for a Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. All right, roll call. So, Pamela? Here. Eduardo? Not here. Bob Essay? Here. Michael Anderson? Not here. Laura? Yeah, I'm here. Christian Pico? Here. Michelangelo Lieberman? Here. here. And Mark is with COVID. Oh, that's awesome. We've I all been there. We let people in. I mean, maybe somebody's online. Do we have anyone online for the Zoom that there may be a Zoom, I guess, with the uh, Paul Travis engineering? I don't know if they're coming in person or not, or if this is just, it might just be a standing spot on our agenda for when they do attend. Um, I, I don't have. Got it. You know, I don't have the information, so. They have my number, so. Yeah. If and if we get text. Call, I can open one up. Okay, great. All right, so. We're going to just quickly uh, motion to approve the minutes. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All righty, approved. So sewer waste committee update. I'm assuming that no one's here from that, right? Uh, you're not with Quest? No, no. Okay. And you're not with D&B Engineering? I am not. All right, just making sure. You're new. We'll get to you soon. <laughs> okay, updates by Village Planner Alec Wallach. I'm assuming... He's not called in, or this might be a quicker meeting than usual. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Um, I guess maybe we can just quickly open it up as to just talk about maybe the village master plan. Um, if anyone had attended the previous charrette um, and had any points or things they wanted to bring up now. There was just one thing curious about the draft, and, and I was not able to attend the um, public meeting about the draft, but in regards to what um, Pamela and I have been working on with senior seasoned citizens, there was only two mentions of anything about the, um, in the plan, addressing this population. And, w and they were very short, and one said that yes, we do have quite a bit of an aging population, <laughs> and two, um, there really aren't anything for them right now. So um, I thought that was curious, uh, given the fact that the demographics support um, a major population being so-called seniors. And that's, that's okay. all I had to say. Is this uh, something you think we should make comments to the, um, uh, the consultants or to the steering committee? and? It, Okay, the steering committee is? Is, is not us. <laughs> the steering committee was Bill Chamber. Not, excuse me, not Bill Chamber. Uh, Bill Manger. Manger, thank you. Bill Manger. Too many, too many commissions, too many boards. Yes, um, right. I don't know who else is on the steering committee at this time. But maybe this is something we can discuss at a later date and then. Sheldon Scott. Sheldon Scott stepped up. I'm sorry. Sheldon when Scott is on the. Are they going to be presenting another another? They should piece? be. We should have yeah. them back here. Well, I mean, that's really Alex Wallach, I guess. So why don't we save that for when Alex is present next, and then we can bring it up to Okay. To All right. That's fine. Sure. Okay. So some of these other topics that Alex was going to cover, um, I think we'll have to save for when we speak with him again next. Um, so I'll skip to number six. So we have a, I'm welcoming you, Patrick. I think you can, is the podium our new uh, place of introducing individuals? Yes. Patrick, welcome. Uh, hi. <laughs> so congratulations that you're now serving as the assistant to the village mayor. Yes, uh, Mark invited me to just come and uh, introduce myself. My name is Patrick Durenz. Uh I started uh, this position about three weeks ago at this point. Um, so I'm rather new, still learning. Um, previously, I had worked for the town supervisor at Riverhead um, in a similar position, and then uh, I had also worked for the presiding officer of the uh, Suffolk County Legislature. Um, 
before here, I was working for the Suffolk County Parks Department, um, and um, oh. I'm really excited <laughs> to be here. Are Glad you an arborist? <laughs> 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 I know a couple now. <laughs> Will you be attending these meetings, you think, in the future, or depending on the... Uh, it kind of will depend on my schedule, um, okay. but uh, I'd be happy to. It would be, be great to have a direct connection to the yes, mayor. Yes, it would, yeah. really. One line there. All right. Thank you, Patrick. We're glad you're attending, and I hope we stick around. I don't yeah. anticipate this okay. being a long meeting, considering. Welcome. Uh, Thank you. Perhaps we don't have Zoom. <laughs> um, okay. So updates on the recent efforts of the Planning Commission and our task force, Senior Center. Um, would you two like to Go ahead. speak to that? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, I haven't gotten an appointment with Trustee Brown, right? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that I have anything, we have anything more than what I was attempting to say last week um, in that the um, library has lots of stuff for older people and, and they have teas and lunches and they have programs and everything. Uh, we found out the museum, the historical museum, has something once or twice a year. And um, the different churches have something once or twice a year or are trying to. They are either actively doing it or trying to get into doing it. So that there might not be something going on like every week for them, but there's a lot, you know, because it's the senior group that, that that's being addressed is, a lot of them don't drive, you know. They don't do a lot of things. It's a lot of work to get the 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 transportation set up. The town, um, um, what's it called? Senior group, yeah, yeah. Senior, senior center, center. Huh? will arrange transportation. Um, the one actually in Bridgehampton is the one that arranges the transportation for the Southampton people. So there is somebody that does that. I think probably a little bit more would be necessary because they can't move everybody at the same time. But there are a number of places that are really anxious to to do things, or they are already doing things, mm -hmm. um, and are very pleased with what they're doing and and, and all. Uh, and to get into the, the, as they said, the town uh, center will pick people up and take them over to the senior center any time they want to go. Because they just, you know, that's what it's there for. Uh, Laura and I were over in um, Hampton Bay. That place is one busy yes, thing, it is. you know, and there's lunch going on and there's people with programs and people signing up for things. And th there's actually a lot more going on. Yeah, than well, I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm just, I am getting text messages from Alex. Yeah, I'm okay, sorry, they, I'm just, right they just said send them the Zoom link to their email if you can. Okay, great. Sorry. Well, you do you, um, I'm not getting service. I don't have his email. I, I have, have it. You have his email. Yeah. And which Zoom link are we sending? I'll tell you in a second. Sorry, I must have a Zoom link. Sorry, Pamela. Well, no, I, I have to make a new one. You okay. If you text me the Zoom link, I can send it via text. Okay. Yep. For whatever reason, I can't get to my email. Yeah, let me just... Uh, I, we personally think that the village, um, maybe a, a, the way into this working with the seniors would be if they could, you know, coord let, the, let them all know what's going on because there is a lot going on. Now, if the village eventually wants to get into having programs and stuff, that'd be wonderful. But I think that right now, if they could send emails to everybody or letters to those who don't use email, telling them um, about what's available for them and the rides that are available for them and the functions that are available for them, I think you get a lot of people interested. But if they don't know what's going on, they can't get there. Um, I know at St. John's they have a, a big knitting thing and um, – and that's something that, you know, us older people like to do. 
and um, but they have to know that it's there. And I think that that's the biggest fall down right now in the village is that there's no communication directly with these people to let them know what's going on. Um, and so I, we were just blown away by what goes on at the town center. Mm -hmm. And I haven't been to the one in Bridgehampton. Mm -hmm. No, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm gonna go there. Um, uh, go ahead. But that's, you know, but there's two of them. Now this, we're told that a lot of the seniors are annoyed that there isn't one in Southampton. But with one in Bridgehampton and one in Hampton Bays, they're not gonna put one here. Plus, where would they put it? You know, so, um, there's not a lot of buildings running around empty here, as we found out. So, you know, that's kind of how we're looking at things. Well, I think and I think what we want to do going forward is take all the information that we compiled from the interviews with various people and with suggestions for uh, better communication, at least, if not a larger commi committee under the community, under the village, that deals with senior issues uh, rather than just one person. I think that um, Pamela and I will probably try to formal formalize something in, in writing to present to Trustee Brown and to this commission, of course, uh, about our findings, about our suggestions, and see where it goes from there. I think that that's the step where we are. Um, and so it's just a matter of putting it on paper and organizing it and getting with Trustee Brown, which is, has proved to be somewhat difficult, but, you know, we'll keep knocking. Have we reached out to the town at all as well? To the town. Mm -hmm. So since they uh, have this facility, then how they, maybe they have outreach information and... We, well, that's exactly what Pamela said. Okay. We, we sat down with Laura Pettit Got it. Okay. at, I apologize. at I'm Hampton Bay's uh, Senior it. Center and spoke to her at length, and of course she is the appointee by the town of Southampton. Yeah. And we learned a lot that the town actually can provide. That will be part of our um, written um, suggestions, um, that what we have found out that they can provide. They can provide uh, transportation, they can provide food, they can provide transportation not only to a, a place, but also to doctors. Uh, we have all this information. They even uh, provide minor maintenance. Yes, for people. And if they have a problem. interestingly enough, I know there was an item in the paper about Cindy uh, McNamara um, partnering with Heart of the Hamptons for assistance. Um, senior assistance to go shopping and to the doctors and stuff. I don't know if y'all saw it. I did not. Okay. Well, that's new. <laughs> well, hum human resources used to do that. Yeah. Well, now uh, the heart of the Hamptons has sort of taken that on, I guess. Anyway, where we are is fact-finding is almost done. Recommendations will follow. Okay. Um, question. Um, I understand that you met with Liz Burns, uh, administrator of the library. Oh, you're on the board. She Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. She was excited to hear about what you wanted to do, mm -hmm. and now that I will be joining the board actually earlier than January 1st, but rather next week, mm -hmm. uh, is there anything I can do to help and coordinate things? That, well, not uh, at this point, I don't think, Christian, because we've got to do sort of list our, our findings and recommendations. So my meeting with Liz was great. Um, she's really on top she, of all she's of She's a this wonderful thing. person. And mm -hmm. she has offered um, the Cooper House is a possible meeting place. It's a great place. And um, she's, uh, as you know, the library does lots of services for the for seniors. And um, they also have a senior advocate that comes, I think, once a month or twice a month. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I sat down with her. Yeah. <laughs> so um, when you get our recommendations and our fact finding, then, then I think we would proceed from there. Okay. But Liz great. is well aware. Yes, of, I, of, I know of she's well aware. And, well and aware of, of where we are. If there's anything I can do as a board member, yeah. be happy to coordinate. Well, I'm sure it'll go before your board. <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever we recommend. All right, thank you. <laughs> okay, so I, I apologize. I've been looking at my phone trying to coordinate with Alex and uh, Charles. He's, he's on. He's okay. He is on. No, it's okay. This audio is not going to work. Oh, the audio is awful. 
So for those of you who are the public, uh, welcome to our new system. Okay, great. Hey, Alex. Sorry. Uh, it sounds like, looks like we have you with us. I don't know how the audio is, though. Most of it. Hey, Alex, can you hear us? One second. Oh, sorry. We got, you're a whisper in the wind. Alex, it maybe did you hopefully send that to Jolie as well? Yes, I did. Great, thank you. Can you hear? Uh, I might be the only one on the board who can hear it, but. Say something. Is that because you're the youngest? <laughs> I, I'm not going to say that. But. Can you say something, Alex? Can you hear me okay? Yes. <laughs> Bob, can you hear me? Yeah. All right, never mind. Yeah, we're, we're a group of young whippersnappers up here. So, Alex, we skipped ahead um, to the update on our uh, planning commission efforts, but we'll come back. Why don't we circle back to you now if you wanted to go through um, some of your talking here. points? Yeah, right here. Uh, sure, I'm just pulling up the agenda now. Is there anything in particular um, that you wanted to um, me to, to talk on? Well, we recently just had that charrette with the master plan, so maybe there was something that came of that that, that you could maybe introduce to us today. Yeah, that's right. So the, uh, the Board of Trustees held a public hearing uh, on the master plan. They received um, several comments from people that came and spoke and provided input. So now the plan is back with the, the consultants who are analyzing the, those comments, uh, making some final tweaks to the plan, and they're going to present it back to the trustees, um, possibly for, uh, for adoption if they're satisfied that all the comments have, have been addressed. Do we anticipate that the trustees will refer back to the Planning Commission for us to provide comments? Um, I think the comment period um, ended with the public hearing, and I think they were going to take written comments up until the point where it was, uh, it was adopted. So if there are any uh, written comments, I would suggest getting them to the uh, village clerk ideally this week. I think they were holding the, the written comments open just to the end of the month. Okay. Till the end of the month as in September or? August. Yeah, I think it was uh, the, uh, the end of August. Okay. So, so did, uh, Alex, the next public hearing uh, for adoption will be the September session? For adoption? That's right. Um, right. I have to check the, uh, the trustees' agenda. I don't know if they're holding um, further public hearings at this point, or they're just going to schedule it for, uh, for a vote. It, he didn't, he, so he closed the public hearing then? Or the, excuse me, the, the board. The hearing was closed uh, at the last okay. one in, in August. Uh, they felt that everybody had give, been uh, given an opportunity to speak. Um, and the comments raised um, weren't a lot of uh, substantial ones. There were a couple of tweaks uh, here and there that I think that they felt that they could make. If okay. you were, excuse me, Alex, if you were going to submit comments to the village clerk, is there a time period when you should do that? Uh, I'm not sure when they are accepted written comments until I thought at the hearing they said until the end of the month. Uh -huh. um, so so. I, and I know, the, uh, uh -huh. I know the consultants are planning to submit a, a memo very soon to the trustees summarizing the changes that they've made. So I would try, um, if you have written comments, to get them in um, by, by tomorrow if possible. By tomorrow. <laughs> okay. okay. okay right. The Friday of Labor Day weekend, really. Okay. She wanted to touch on any of these other, other topics. <laughs> I know there's, I know one that of uh, interest to me is the demolition permit requirements and recycling. If that uh, code uh, update is how, what's the process, or excuse me, progress? Sorry, did you say on demolition? The demolition permit requirements and recycling. So I was just curious as to where we are with that uh, code amendment. I'm not sure what, uh, which one by recycling. I know for the demolition permit, there's a suggestion in the code that for buildings uh, older than a certain age, that a demolition permit be accompanied by um, a proposal for something that's going to replace it so that uh, the board can understand uh, what's being built, that it's going to be in a compatible size and context and, and mass. So that's a recommendation that's in the plan. So okay. if the plan is adopted and that recommendation um, is in it, the, uh, the Board of Trustees could possibly take up a code amendment that would implement that. Okay. One question I have is, uh, what would be the fine if they tore a building down without getting a demolition 
permit without getting a demolition permit. So that would be subject to, uh, they would be in, in violation of the code, um, and they would be um, assessed to up fines, I'm assuming, by, uh, by code enforcement. Yeah, but what fine would it be? Uh, that's a question for, uh, for code enforcement. Unfortunately, I don't have that information. Because I was on the board, they did a, they did a demolition like that without getting approval for a house down on Lewis Street. And the fine was $800. Wow, okay. Yeah, that's something that I, don't, I can make a note to, uh, to see if the uh, code enforcement can give us infor information on them, if that's something that they would be able to give us uh, an answer to. Um, I know the building department is dealing with a similar uh, situation right now where we have people who have exceeded their, uh, their permits and effectively um, demolished buildings. What about the recycling of building materials that are demolished? Is that addressed yeah, anywhere? I'm not familiar, I don't know if the plan is, uh, speaks to that. Hmm. That's a shame. Yeah, that is a shame. Um, I think that's something we talk about with the mayor, the, the concept of reuse, you know, that third R that is often ignored when we think about reduce, recycle, and then, of course, reuse. Um, okay, so maybe perhaps is there an update on the RFP for the architectural and historic structures for the uh, reconnaissance survey? Yes, that's right. So a, uh, a consultant team has been uh, selected. The mayor has signed off on, uh, on the contract, and we just uh, this week had a kickoff kickoff call with them. Uh, the name is Preservation Studios. They did a very similar project to the Village of Greenport um, and provided them with a very thorough and detailed uh, report. Um, so we met with, uh, with uh, our village administrator, with some of the members of the Architectural Review Board. Um, we had a coordination call with, uh, with the staff at the state um, who's, uh, who's working with us and is partially um, funding this project. So their plan is to, um, they're starting their research now. They're doing a lot of analysis of the work that's been done to date. And Great. on Monday, September 12th, they're going to be um, in the village. Um, we're going to have an in-person meeting with them. They're going to be driving up and down every street uh, of the village um, in those, those couple of days. And there's going to be a presentation at 5 p.m. Um, to the ARB and to the public um, about well, where they are in that, in that, um, in that project and uh, next steps moving forward. Great. Thank you for the summary there. It sounds like there's major progress. And this uh, presentation, excuse me, preservation studies, Oh, where are they based out of? Um, I believe they have offices in New York, um, and but I think the, uh, they're based out of uh, Buffalo, New York. So they're a larger firm than the... Oh, great. Uh, that's awesome. Alex? Yeah. I, I want to uh, go back to what my colleague, Mr. Essay, said about the violations for tearing down a building. Generally, uh, the code refers to... Um, Article 2 penalty and, F and offenses at the beginning of the code. And it talks about uh, penal law in the state of New York punishable by a fine not exceeding $2,000 or imprisonment for not exceeding 15 days. Um, and most of our code goes back and refers to that first line uh, of that um, Article 2. And to me, um, I would hope that uh, for something like this, the referral uh, to penalties would not be to that Article 2, but something a bit more serious than a couple of thousand bucks. So I really want to make the point that Mr. S.A. made to drive that. May I make a suggestion? I made a suggestion years ago that they uh, we'd ban from doing anything to property for two years and it'd have to reapply all over again. The $2,000 or $800 fine is just peanuts when they sell a house for $4 million. 40. So 40. Maybe it should be a percentage. Is that something that we could... Never go <laughs> yeah, is that something we can perhaps bring to the board's attention? Because you remember you said, what, $2,000 fine? It's the state, New York State penal law that it refers to, which is just not right. Do sufficient. So, Alex, this is what's the? I mean, how does one bring this up? I mean, we typically would hold a little vote here if this is something of a topic that's of interest to us, and then we could either champion and explore it and research it further, which doesn't sound like we need to, or we could no. formally let the board know that this is something we'd like them to consider. Make a long and I, I think if you do it, it's a little Sorry. bit easier if you were able to 
submit that in the form of a uh, of a of a, of a, uh, of a code amendment. It gives the board something uh, to respond to if there's something specific that you'd like to see changed. So you, I'm sorry, just to hear you more clearly. Uh, so you'd like us to write a, the code amendment, or you would like us to write a recommendation for a code amendment to suggest a higher fine and or a scale or um, by the percentage? It's a, a suggestion. It's up, up to the board. Uh, but typically, if you're able to suggest something in the form of a quote amendment, it, it makes it a little bit easier for the trustees to respond to rather than having to, to draft something from scratch. So if that's something that you can speak to the trustees and you feel that they're amenable to, that might be one approach to take. Okay. Uh, I think that's something we might want to... Perhaps putting yeah. the cart before the horse, let me explain. So once they start rewriting the code and do a new draft for that particular issue, mm -hmm. there will be a public hearing for it, and it is at that time that you bring up the issue of the offense, to not go back to Article 2, but to have a specific part of offense in that section of the code. My view. Yes, and then, and then if we could see a draft, before it goes to public hearing, to in uh, well to to review with that offense uh, whatever in mind, if it's in the draft. Sure, we could yeah. ask for that. We could ask for that. A draft of the revision about the demolition to include an uh, an offense policy. Okay. No, Alex, are you hearing us okay? Is there a delay? You think? Know, I'm sorry, there's a little bit of, it's a little hard to hear towards the end. Of I'm the sorry. Day, so go I ahead and say, he hears you guys well, so go ahead. All right, Chris. Uh, Alex, um, do, do I need to repeat what I said earlier? Uh, I heard you say something about whether, about the code being rewritten. Right. So, uh, in the issue of demolition, um, as defined in the master plan, what I would expect to happen is that a law revision would be proposed through a public hearing. It is at that time that suggestion could be made for uh, an offense section embedded in that particular section of the code that is specific for a demolition as opposed to referring to Article 2 in New York State Penal Law. You imagine that, that because there are recommendations in the code about demolition, that then that may be one of many code changes that are uh, proposed after the plan is adopted. All right, thank you. After the plan is adopted, okay. Well, and would it be possible, Alec, to get a review of a draft of that um, rewrite of the code before it goes to public hearing for the Planning Commission? It's a good question. It's something that would come through the trustees, so I'm not sure um, it necessarily would come through, through our office, uh, but certainly that's a request that I think this board could make of the, of the trustees. Okay. Make it of the trustees. Okay. Thank you. So am I not mistaken to think that we should formally request that the trustees look into this or consider it? Well, um, I think this commission is saying that it would like to see drafts before public hearings mm -hmm. to give us time. Um, and so the, what I think the commission is saying is that it wants to submit to the Board of Trustees a request to see such drafts as they relate to uh, the master plan. And, okay. and specifically to issues of the master plan. Right. So any rewriting and redrafting that will go on over the next 18, 24 months, as far as code is concerned, there will be public hearings for it. And what the commission would like, uh, per Article 20 of the code, given its uh, responsibility to the implementation of the master plan, that it should see such um, uh, such drafts. Yes. Is, is there a board member, do you think, that would be interested in this specifically? That we should be in touch with? I think uh, Bill Manger, um, as you know, was part of the steering committee for the master plan yeah, and is the liaison to uh, yeah, right. building and, and planning department. Okay. So that would so be the, I, the I think the, choice. The chair, co chair of the planning mm -hmm. commission, for and on behalf of it, should submit such request to Bill Manger with copy to the rest okay. of the board of trustees. Okay. Are we all in agreement about that? I mean, mm -hmm. should we take a vote on that or I, that's fine? Yeah, I think it might be appropriate to take a vote. 
So all in favor? Aye. 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 All righty. Okay, so I will reach out to Bill Manger and uh, we'll begin the process. Um, do we want to look at the village building department to accept town issued home improvement contract license and statues of intermunicipal agreement? I'm assuming this is in relation to the town and uh, the licensing agreement and having access to the town's uh, process, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that's correct, and I believe that was passed by the trustees, and I think what may have to follow is a um, intermunicipal agreement between the village and the town to, right. uh, to effectuate that. It, okay. It's a reciprocity agreement, so we still don't have that in place? Um, I don't know if the, uh, if the IMA is in place, but I know that the trustees did adopt the requirement that uh, contractors in the village have the town license right. rather than the county license. Um, I think that was adopted at the, one of the last meetings. So specifically on Chapter 107 that I worked on, for example, on um, legislation for uh, leaf blowers, uh, we addressed <coughs> reciprocity agreement in the code, uh, which was uh, passed. But effectively, we don't have a reciprocity agreement yet. I think that's something. Um, that's being worked on between the town and the village. Okay, thank you. All right, so since we have Alex here, and I think we can move to back to uh, an update on the recent efforts of the Planning Commission, and we can speak to the tree board, the Tree USA Initiative, because Alex, you're still here, and I know you've been putting a lot of work into the revisions of that code. Um, Christian or, or Laura, do you, either of you want to field this? We're open up. Um, so just to keep you up to date, um, Alex, thank you for the work that you've done. Um, the tree task force with uh, Laura Davini, uh, Michelangelo Lieberman, and Michael Anderson and myself will meet on Wednesday at 4.30 to go through the draft and make some rec final recommendations to you. Uh, and um, uh, so, that's, uh, so we should have them probably within a week, 10 days post next, uh, next, uh, next Wednesday. Uh, we'll then have to uh, secure some uh, time with uh, Village Council, Ken Gray. And uh, I wanted to share with you uh, the path thereafter. Uh, so the delivery of this draft uh, to the Board of Trustee is scheduled for September 30th. So all of us on the task force and you, uh, Alex, will make sure that we get that by September 30th. It will be uh, slated for public hearing on October 13th. I've already um, secured space for that with the um, village administrator and, and, uh, and Kathy, uh, and uh, assume uh, that we'll have a full room on that day on the subject. Uh, with good comments, we'll have a second public hearing on November 10th, and uh, by then we should have a resolution to adopt the revised Southampton Village Code 107. The resolution will also nominate uh, members of the Tree Committee, um, and we'll have this completed, therefore, by November 10th, at which point we'll start the application for the Tree City USA and lobby for the um, Arbor Day Foundation um, out in, I forget where they are, in Kansas somewhere. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and hopefully we'll have that uh, label uh, for the Southampton Village in Q1, Q2 of uh, 2023. So that's the plan. Uh, thereafter, obviously, DPW organization policies, procedures for trees uh, will be worked on, um, you know, sometimes in Q1, 23, once we get that. Um, Alex, I sent you by email um, my review of your draft. Did you receive it? I did see them earlier today. I think what we need to do is um, forward them to Mark. I think he has the, the latest draft to, uh, to address those changes you suggested. Okay, well, um, I, I also sent it to our task force um, just to keep you in the loop. And I, I wanted to uh, thank you very much for your draft. It was very thorough and very well done, and I don't see any major changes to your draft. So 
hopefully after the meeting that we have with the task force on Wednesday, it will be fairly simple to send to you um, for a final final draft. Thank you. Thank you. Alex, I had a couple of questions. Um, uh, DPW superintendent, um, <clears throat> uh, do we have one? Where are we with that? I understand that uh, Gary is still uh, present as the superintendent of DPW, but he, had, he is in the process of, of retiring. I'm not sure when his last date uh, is or where they are with um, expecting a replacement. Okay. It's and the second question is uh, the arborist. Do we have on staff an arborist? Well, uh, that I do not know. It's not in, uh, in my department. I was just thinking that if any any f hiring of a new Department of Public Works person might include that he's an arborist <laughs> as a qualification. <laughs> Since Gary was one, it would be very nice to have another one. Um, and I know that's probably not your department, but I'm going to just put it out there. Sure. That's a good suggestion, not certainly above my pay grade. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, so the Real Estate Acquisition Task Force, um, who is championing that? Um, um, Michael, Michael and Anderson. And I, and okay. And yeah. Do you have an update, or do you want, would you want to wait for Michael? Um, yeah, because I, when I, Mark sent me an email not too long ago asking, you know, what we had found, um, and what what we have found so far, um, Mark has this wonderful idea that these people are going to want to donate their property <laughs> to the village, and I told him what the values on both of these properties were, and I don't really think I don't think they held on to these properties all this long <laughs> to no. donate them. I just don't think so. Um, plus, the the ones that I know of. Uh, aren't in great, it, it depends on what you want to use it for. And if you just want to sterilize it and have it um, never developed, um, you know, well, that's fine. But that also takes a lot off of tax rolls and stuff. And um, uh, But they're not good places for parks. You know, this is, I don't think the neighborhood would react Appreciate to them quite use. well because mm -hmm. they're just, they're only, Eight, uh, uh, probably acre lots, you know, one's a little bit bigger than an acre. Um, they're not big enough to do a whole lot of anything but cause an intense amount of noise to the neighbors. So I'm, I'm not sure, you know. Um, and of course, there's a lot of agricultural lots, but they have their own, all their own paperwork that goes along with them. Uh, um, so I don't, I don't know if Michael found any anything more or discovered someone who wants to donate it. Okay. But um, that's kind of where we were the last discussion on the subject. Okay, so perhaps we'll hear from Michael at the next meeting and see if there's been an update. Um, the Mobility Task Force, who is heading that? Yeah. I'm heading the Mobility Task Force? What's yours? <laughs> well, it's not on my radar, but if I am, <laughs> I guess it will now be on my radar. Well, one thing I did is I, I got the phone number for the State Highway Department as far as who's in charge of lights. I found out the State of New York only has one light in our area, and that's at Hampton Road and Montauk Highway. I made a suggestion to them to have left-hand turning arrows put in it. He said that we're going to do a study on it. He also gave me the phone number for the county who's in charge of the rest of the lights. And they were going to, I called them, and they were going to send an engineer and say, now all of a sudden I see the traffic county devices put on the road. So I guess they must have, uh, I mean, you don't need to just try to make a left-hand turn. Yeah, my understanding is the required permits, I think, on some of these roads in the state and the county. Well, it's, I don't know how they, they have to do a su survey. That's how much I mm -hmm. do know. Okay. The other thing I want to mention in the village, you're coming on Job's Lane heading west. <laughs> You get, the, you get that left-hand turning hour, but the other side doesn't know that they have a left-hand turning hour. And then when the light turns green the other side, the people who are heading west don't know that they've got the green light. It's kind of very confusing. That should be corrected. It should be set up like they do in Florida. 
green light, left hand turning out, everybody else is red. And then that turns red and the other side goes green. It seems to work very fine. But okay. trying to make a left hand turn around here, it is almost impossible. So Bob, I might have to circle back with you so to uh, get a better handle on what we should be doing with the ta this mobility task force and the parking app study um, and some of these other proposed. Uh, well, this, uh, mm -hmm. as far as the parking, when Moon Grady and myself, well, Moon brought this parking garage up and everybody was dead opposed to it until I started to see how they built parking garages in Florida. You do not know their parking garages. They look like regular buildings. And I brought this point up is the village itself is about built out, but our outlying community is getting developed. All the areas that I remember used to be all woods, there's houses in it, and we become the commercial hub. And I don't know if we have really enough parking spaces. And the only, re only way we can do it is to go up, because I don't know of any other vacant land left. And we talked about, I think, uh, uh, Sammy Cmac mentioned about putting a parking garage in the parking lot behind it and saying stores on one side and mm -hmm. parking. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. You can hide a parking garage in a way that you never know it's there, and then you can create alleys and multi-use uh, business in the, on the lower level and, you know, create, expand our commercial district, you know, so we just don't have cement. Um, but it's, it's costly, um, and I, I don't know what the master plan, if they have any recommendations regarding um, a parking facility in the rear uh, portion of the uh, downtown village. Uh, is that something you know anything about, Alex, with recommendations in the master plan, if they've contemplated parking uh, garages? Um, I don't believe a parking garage was mentioned. I think what is suggested is there be a parking management study that analyze uh, okay. how much of the parking is used and what the demand is, um, and then suggest things that may help uh, better utilization. Yeah, because if they're suggesting more or higher buildings and or uh, zoning recommendations that increase density then some of these might need to be considered. Um, but I guess, so if they're recommending a further study, then we'll, it'll reveal itself. Um, okay, Bob, is there anything else in, in our task force that I should be made aware of now? Is it, oh, one other thing, uh, this really doesn't have anything to do with the village, it's more of it has to do with watermill. Um, the bottleneck in watermill I see is coming down Little Cobb Road, merging in, and them trying to make a left-hand turn off of Mill Road onto Montauk Highway. Now, over on Scullahall Road and Strong Lane and Hedapon Road, the town made Strong Lane a dead-end street, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And they, they corrected that. What they should do is Little Cobb Road should make that a dead-end street and make no left-hand turns allowed on Mill Road, and that would help clear up some of the bottlenecks and get the traffic moving somewhat and hopefully get it somewhat out of the village. Yeah, maybe that should be a study then for, is the it town. Is that a county something road then? The, That's a county the road? Town, no, the village should send to the town, town to do town. something. I'm, town. I'm not, again, I'm not sure who owns that road. Yeah. It could be the state or it could be the county. Yeah. Am I going to use for a second? Yeah. Please. Could be the county. So we're talking about Little Cobb Road. You'd want to ha have a dead end? Dead end. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it might be something we should talk in a work session. Yeah. We'd be no, making that recommendation. You, you could, uh, I'm trying to think, Strong Lane, you can go into Strong I'm Lane sorry. from Scuttle Hall, mm -hmm. but you can't come out. Mm -hmm. And then Mill Road should be made only right hand turns, no left hand turns, because it just, you see them coming out of it and they're trying to merge and you're lucky you don't hit anybody. Well, yeah. I mean, it's a mess. Isn't this the matter, <laughs> though, for the Town, yes, well, to deal this with. Is a question. I think that the village should send a letter to the town. I'm not I, sure. Again, I, agree. I don't know whose road that is. I don't know if that's the state or the county. So we'll we'll look into it a little bit further, and we'll revisit this. Okay. Um, but thank you, Bob. Um, I'm going to assume that's the last of the mobility task force that I'm heading. Um, <laughs> so the term limit task force. I know I'm not heading this one. I'm sorry. Yeah. No. Just to finish on mobility, there was mm -hmm. a discussion for a while to have these, 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 um, what do you call it, these, uh, Speed no, um, 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 I forget what they call it, these two-wheeler things. Um, oh, right, that's why I ended up being, heading yeah. this. Okay, yeah, yeah bird. 
Um, for a scooter. Yeah, that's right. right. Scooters. Electric Thank scooters. You. Sorry. Yeah, I just well, my age now. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't think we wanted to pursue that, right? Is that something that? I'm. Well, it's. I know, there are case studies where the, the it gets out of hand, especially because I believe this is a dockless system, meaning that yep. you could leave these. Uh, scooters all over the all place, over the place. Yeah. and so when we launched the bike share program in the town with a dockless system we found that to be problematic um, so right now I think we have a dock to dock system at the town and that's been a, a better fit I don't know if this makes sense especially because we closed down two of our roads to biking or excuse me four roads in the downtown area to biking I can't imagine that's you know right. that's right so this I, having a lot of options so is that bird initiative uh, I haven't heard from them in a while. You should just table it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I don't think that um, you know, given the age of the population, that that's really something I'm going to hop on. No, <laughs> but the, there's you know the, the summer population. No, and, I understand, you know, but and a healthier community has a yeah. spread demographic. Yeah, and they're and they're all in their cars. <laughs> well, just from my experience, where um, they do use these things. Um, in certain cities in the U.S. and a lot in Europe, what I see is just chaos mm -hmm. um, and, and danger. Um, I do, too. Well, and I just don't think it's a good idea. I've seen I, them in, in parks, you know, large parks. And I think it would be appropriate if we had the infrastructure to accommodate it. So, like, multimodal transportation routes, you know, which we don't currently have. So it gets to the chicken or the egg conversation of do we increase the us usership and the culture, change the culture of using these non, you know, car... Uh, uh, alternative modes well, of transportation. Well that's, that's, that's one suggestion, of yeah. course. Yes, of course. Or do we build the routes and then if we build it, they will come. You know, it's the, well, the age all debate. Well, and the dockless thing has to be addressed. Yeah, that, well, that, I don't know if there, there will be other organizations that reach out. Bird has, has been silent for months, hence why I forgot I was chairing this. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's one thing I want to brought up. The other day I went down um, Holsey Street we, all the construction and the cars parked on the other side of the road, mm -hmm. only making it one lane traffic. I know, it's awful. Now, I grew up on Jennings and Hilbert. Somebody threw a party there a couple of days ago, and the cars parked on both sides of the road. There's no way we could have gotten in there with a fire truck. Wow. These landscape trailers take up one lane completely, and if somebody parks across the street, you're down to just barely making it through. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, <clears throat> we just go back to the old age question of code enforcement or lack thereof um, in Southampton Village. I mean, that's the core of the issue. And then we go down to the next step, which is the court system. Once you have code enforcement violation and dealing with it, so that's where it's stuck. I, I think that if you made a, a rule that everybody parks on one side of the road so there's lane to get through, and everybody knew about that rule, you couldn't stop the phones ringing to report it. You wouldn't even need someone driving around to see whether it's being enforced One of the other things... Because uh, everybody hates it. You know? I have to mention is when they buy these houses and renovate them, instead of having saying six, being able to six, six cars, you, you're lucky to get three in these driveways. They yeah. reduced it down. They want more yardage. Yeah. And then they park out in the street. When I grew up in this town, you never found anybody parking on the street. Well, Homes got a lot bigger. Yeah, well, everybody's got a car, you know, from age 16 to... Yeah, but you still had 80. room. Now, I can think of one. Joe Romanowski's father-in-law lived on Layton Avenue. He had a two-car garage, two cars in there, two behind it, and two more in the driveway. Well, they renovated it now that maybe you get three cars in that yard. Ah. Well, Layton Avenue does have the one-side parking. Doesn't it? But then, but then you get a landscape trailer, which is two of them were parked on that street. You're down to one lane. True. I know. I travel those streets all the time. It's a pain in the neck. Yes. Uh, again, in the master plan, <laughs> is there anything on that? I didn't read the whole thing, nor did I go I to the public hearing. Is there anything addressing these issues in the master plan? Uh, parking and, I mean, um, these issues. Traffic. Well, uh, well, it's really more kind of like. Congestion on congestion. Well, I, parking I suggestions, yeah. etc. Is there? A, I didn't read the whole thing. I didn't read it. Yeah. I'm so not sure. Um, can't confirm or deny. Alex, is, Alex, is there issues about 
parking on one side of the street, the other, or anything like that, or in the master plan? Of um, landscaping uh, vehicles being parked on the street where no parking right. is allowed, that in certain areas that they have to be located uh, on the property that they're servicing. Yeah. So but nope. some of these things are like semi trucks. I mean, they right. they can't get they can't Falling. they couldn't get on the property where they're so, managing. So, so right. Like, so there is stuff in the master plan to address those points. So let's let, let's let that yeah, uh, following germinate. The adoption of the master plan, we'll be able to work with the elected officials to figure out which recommendations they want to pursue. Because right. um, ultimately, I know we have our interests, but we do yeah. have to check in with the elected board and make sure we're all aligned. Right. Um, so just for the sake of time, we have the term limit task force. I don't think I'm chairing this. No. Nope. <laughs> okay. I don't think well, it's been it instituted. Yeah, it's been so instituted. So, so no. your, your chair sent an email around to everyone asking who might be interested in a task force. Um, Laura, I understand you are, but which other members might be interested in this? Well, I have a caveat here. <laughs> um, I would just like to know what this task work is, task force is tasked to do. And I, that hasn't really been explained. So I think that in order to form it, we need to know what it's going to do, what what its purpose is. Is this something that so so the chair sent this email, basically explaining that the idea is to have elections every other year. Mm -hmm. uh, pure and simple. Okay. So one needs to do some um, benchmarking, um, and uh, I know Marcus started uh, with um, uh, various groups to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, just going back to this. Um, I just have a question. Is the mayor and the board of trustees requesting this um, from the planning commission to review? According to Mark. They are. Yeah. Uh, I, I no. Well, yeah. hold on. Uh, we, if you remember, we sent a letter asking to have uh, their um, have them request that we look into it. And nobody answered for obvious reasons. So we then sent a different type of letter, which was basically a no action, giving them 30 days to respond if they objected to the planning commission to work on it. They didn't respond. Therefore, they are not objecting to the planning commission to work on it. So the I planning didn't commission I didn't see is these working letters. on it. Okay, I didn't. I we was should, unaware of the letters. We should take that approach for a lot of the renewable energy and uh, sustainability well, issues. In well, <laughs> sure, but that's that's it's, okay. I, I never saw these letters, so I don't know. So we are now, therefore, forming a task force. Okay. To look at uh, the issue, uh, the electoral issue, and make recommendations. Mm -hmm. As to how to go about it, and we need two, three, four people. Um, some of the things that we thought might be useful uh, to talk about tonight was to have not just planning commission uh, people work on this task force, but perhaps some outside members as well. I think that would be advisable. Maybe it's on from ethics. I wonder. Uh, are we just talking about the mayor and the trustees' positions here? The BOT, the, B, the Board of Trustees. BOD. Mm -hmm. And I think salary was also being considered. Um, if you guys want to go down that path, I would advise you to separate the issues. I agree. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay. Well, um, yes, I will serve. I've told the chair that I already had too much on my plate, and I was not. But You're I have some ideas. It. You're not doing it. I'm not. No, I have plenty of ideas I could share, but I'm not working on it. I don't have. The Nor am I. Nor are you. <laughs> no. So. Okay. Well. So okay. Then fall. I am. I'm rescinding my. Um, oh. Wait. 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 wait, wait we're not finished. I'm rescinding my acceptance. We still have a couple of guys that aren't here. We're not. Yes. Yeah. We have other members, and we, we also we have. They can and actually, get you know, serving we, serving already on two task forces is 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 a lot for me to handle. So. Well, Upon I, further consideration, I, 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 I withdraw. Look, Laura, I think you would do a great job on it. But yeah, let me, let me share with you some other thoughts on it. Um, um, I think Mark, this is very close to him. But Mark is really on to the Mark subject. Mark is on it, yeah. And, and, uh, and 
he uh, just going through? Um, well, if he wants to have notes. other people, then he can he can do it with other folks. Um, you sure you don't want to be there? No. <laughs> so, so we need. Well, look, we need a task force for this. So Mark, we know, wants to head it, mm -hmm. uh, and he needs two, three capable people. <laughs> um, not n all necessarily from the Planning Commission. In fact, we have one member of the public tonight by the name of Susan Steinhardt uh, with a mask standing over there, who is also currently on the uh, Board of Ethics, um, who's expressed interest in helping out as a public or non-planning commission person uh, for this. Um, and the idea wonderful. would be to possibly coordinate with the Board of Ethics uh, if the chair of the Board of Ethics um, uh, thinks it's a good idea. Um, and I know Mrs. Steinhardt would have uh, great interest. She has a legal background. Uh, it's been on ethics for now 18 months. Um, and, and as a non-PC member, I think would be really useful. So would you reconsider if you had somebody to work with? <laughs> Maybe if Sue came up to the podium. Because we don't want to let Mark, I, Mark yeah. on his own with this. And I, this is going to be a challenging issue. It it's really going to be is. a rodeo, it really but is. it has to be it, handled it is. with and, the right and people. No, I'm going to stand by my uh, no thank you. OK. Good. Well, we ne we're going <laughs> to we have you, Bob. Um, in my reading of history, I never found anything that had to determine the two-year period. The only thing I did come across that when the village became incorporated, it went up a vote twice because of some objections from the village residents. It went twice for voting. But I never came across anything as far as, you know, how they determined how many years they should serve. I did come across something in zoning when I read this book, uh, uh, Crossing the Sound, that minimum zoning when they came here in 1640 was four acres. Right. And I read that to the uh, uh, trustees, the mayor and the trustees that came in one night and read the article out of it that was unsubdividable. <laughs> well, I, I, look, well, at Christian, this point, you, what we you need didn't to do invite, is... You didn't invite Pamela <laughs> to be on this Well, any, any members of the planning commission... Again, I'm speaking for and on behalf of Mark, who's heading this. I'm sorry, yes, of course. And, okay, and, Mark. And, and, uh, <laughs> and, and, and we need... We need uh, well, Pamela has been here forever. She knows everything. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Pamela is it. <laughs> Pamela, well, do you uh, agree to be on this committee? Oh, I think yeah, be, I, I can do that. I, I think it's going to be a really interesting outcome for the community. Very Especially if the salaries stay low and uh, well, just the the salary separate the issues the for salary. me. Right, well, so we'll stick with the term limit. And so we have Mark, Pamela, and perhaps a member from the planning, excuse me, the ethics committee. Is I didn't see, I look for, I'm from the public. She spoke. Do you think the ethics board would be interested in having, being a part of this formally? Is that something you'd be willing to do on our behalf? Uh, I don't see why not. I think well, if we can have one person, yes, but if it turns into be a whole group with a group, it's just gonna, not going to work. No, it's true, but as of right now, it's two of our members. So it's perhaps as a joint task, well, yeah. it's well, you if have, and... If we had, had oh, Pam, right. if Mrs. Me. Steinhardt <laughs> is uh, willing and able to do it, and Mark, that's three people. Mm -hmm. well, we still have and Michael perhaps and Mike Anderson and, 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 may, and, may and Ed. And, and, and get Ed Simononi. Simononi. Yeah. Would you ask the other boards, like the uh, ARB or the zoning or planning? No. No, no I, I don't think, think it's that ethics. Ethics. The ethics is really, I think that's critical. I do too. And I think, yeah, I think that's wonderful. And, and I think it's just fortuitous that, uh, that's the right word? Fortuitous. That, fortuitous that uh, Mrs. Steinhardt and I discussed this earlier this week, and she expressed immediate interest in it, uh, makes a lot of sense because uh, any attempt from the public to say there's conflict of interest and all of this will be right, uh, right into the Board of Ethics right. uh, purview. So that's the notes I was looking for, and Mark is already in contact with the Mayor's Association 
on the topic and the Suffolk County Officials Association. So he started to do some work, uh, but it's going to be a lot of benchmarking and, and understanding how to best to do this, whether it ends up with a referendum or however the task force right. ends up to figure this out. Um, it, it has to have a mission, which I think is simply um, have an electoral review which um, changes the terms such as you have elections every other year. And uh, that's a pretty simple mission, but with a difficult task. I'm, I'm curious, has any, uh, uh, what does the town do? What does the town they do? They have uh, two years for board members, excuse me, two years for the uh, supervisor and four years for board members. Right. Okay, exactly. now, uh, the, didn't, wasn't there a recent issue that Snyderman wanted to do something about? He's termed out, so he wanted to expand the terms or he had interest in it, um, okay. but I don't think he plans on doing that for himself. He might just be for, for going the position. Forward. Yeah, and I don't know if there's still any interest okay. in it. Okay, what, uh, what is the term limit for the town supervisor? It might be three terms. Six years? Well, that's a different and additional topic that the task force would work on. No, no, I'm just limits. curious. Yeah. I'm just putting yeah. it out there I'm for pretty conversation. Sure it's three. Does the the, and, the and that would have, have teeth for you guys no, to no, work I on. No, no, I understand, uh, but I'm just curious. I don't know if the village does have, given how long it Mayor does Emily not. served. It does not have yeah. term limits. Yeah, and there is possibly uh, a desire to for the for, to have that, and the task force would need to ferret all these recommendations. Yeah, I mean, that's not and a bad you, idea. And you would look at that as part of the task force. I wouldn't. <laughs> well, I mean, or one, you one more. One more. One more. Are you reconsidering? Well, no, no. You and Pam are a wonderful team. <laughs> we are. All right, first. Citizen. Member of the public yeah. or a village I, resident. I, yeah, exactly. Um, and just ha again, happen to be on the ethics board. Uh, so would you mind coming up to the podium so we can, oh, do, people can hear you? Oh, I'm good. Um, All right. Yeah. 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 Come on, get up there, Sue. <laughs> Yeah. Introduce yourself and then take it from the top. Hi, Susan Steinhardt. I volunteered uh, in a conversation with Christian as a private citizen, um, happened to be on the ethics board. I, I, in thinking about this, it actually makes good sense to have the ethics board in a formal way partner as uh, on this task force. And I will go back to my colleagues. And, and and see what the response is. I would appreciate that. I, okay. I do think it's uh, the smart but strategic You want one rep, I yourself, yeah. <laughs> to be working with that task force. I will volunteer myself to my to, <laughs> to my colleagues as being the, the person who would represent the Board of Ethics. Thank but you. I that do would think be it's great. a great idea. It's going to okay. be a lot of work, uh, but I think the outcome can be very beneficial for the village. I think so. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, Sue. So, so that's Bill Mark, Pam, Pamela, Sue, that's three. And we'd have to query. We have Pamela. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have to. Oh, got that. And, we, and we'd have to query the other two uh, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's to be continued. Right. For our next meeting, we can bring up our mic. When is your next meeting that you would talk to people? <laughs> oh, we're all we're you very don't. informal, okay. and, um, So that Charles doesn't lose his uh, mind over this, I will repeat her comments, that she will contact them uh, in, in an informal setting. So. In an informal setting, we, okay. and, and we will have a response uh, within a certain, within... Short a reasonable time. amount of time. Sure, <laughs> whatever that means. Sorry, Charles. I know this is all new to us as well. We appreciate your patience. Okay, so updates on village news and developments. Uh, I know Lynn Arthur, Renewable Energy Long Island, CCA program. This is something that I wanted to bring to the attention of the Planning Commission. Um, CCA, Community Choice Aggregated Solar, these kind of projects are opportunities to A, reduce the energy uh, bills of our residents. Um, it's also an opp opportunity to perhaps generate revenue for the municipality. Um, the town, for example, has, has put a solar panel or is in the process of putting a solar installation on their landfill. They're leasing out the land 
on a landfill and they will receive several million dollars over the course of a 20-year lease. Um, we have uh, similar opportunities in this community, especially if we were to pass battery storage legislation um, where a, at no cost to the village we could be putting battery and or solar projects over our, or our solar uh, parking canopies and parking lot municipal lots on uh, municipal buildings. Um, this is something that I know the elected board has taken an interest in. Um, but so something that Lynn Arthur will be presenting to us uh, in the future. I hope you all have equal enthusiasm for this. I, I, I do think it could be something that, you know, often a lot of our programs and a lot of things, a lot of the initiatives that the village wants to pursue, we have budgeting issues, but there is real revenue opportunity here. Really? Um, at no cost to the village. Right. You don't have to talk to me. I put solar in my house several years ago. <laughs> right. I knew it was coming. Yeah. So, I in my house in Florida. Lynn will, will hopefully present soon. I know we had hoped to have her here, um, I, and I apologize. I, I got, you know, I was on vacation, had COVID, and I kind of got disconnected. Uh, but I'll follow up. Um, I'm just curious: has has there been any more site specifically as possibilities in this in the town? Yeah. Well, we're working with a consultant, and we've reviewed uh, several. Um, mm -hmm. They started off like 200 sites, but really, when you get down to it, we don't a need 200. No. There are our sites that really make sense are low-hanging fruit. Um, the issue is the village, like the town, excuse me, the town, like the village, does not have large-scale uh, solar code. So um, we are drafting that right now to as an enabling legislation to allow for these projects. Um, but we have landfills, we have um, sand mines. This is you know adaptive reuse uh, opportunities, mm -hmm. um, and we have large municipal parking lots that mm -hmm. could all be considered. Um, there are three private battery storage projects that are currently being considered by the town, one in Riverside, one in Hampton Bays, and one in Shinnecock Hills, Hampton Bays, by the canal. Mm -hmm. um, but they're not CCA, so they don't give back to the community. They're a part of kind of a renewable energy future. Uh. You know, they're a tool in the tool shed. But CCA specifically, which the right. village could even create a code that says if you're going to do a battery storage or solar storage project in this community, uh -huh. it has to have a community benefit portion. And that could be a 10, 15% reduction in energy bills, which we're in zone K. Uh, turns out I know a lot about this and less about mm -hmm. parking mobility. Right. So we're in zone K <laughs> in Suffolk County, which is the highest rate in New York State per kilowatt hour. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's like, let's say, 20 something per cents a kilowatt hour. And um, so this is really advantageous for us to take kind of control of uh, how we uh, develop and, and uh, how we, you know, consider our energy future because the utility is looking at doing upgrades to um, peaker plants, you know, coal-based, hundreds yeah. of millions of dollars. There are a lot of other ways in which we can accommodate the grid. Um, so, you know, this is something that we should be kind of in the forefront of, in, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's interesting that the town is, is writing a code for this I specifically, who. and and you're doing it, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. um, does the village have to have its own code for this? Uh, I mean, that is, uh, I would assume so. Yeah, I mean, the way in which our, the village Southampton Town Code work is, you have to have legislation in place. Right. Sort of, is that what that's I come to understand. Right, that. permissible code, I believe it's called. So, um, is there somebody? that's going to do that? Has well, it been addressed in the master plan? Has, uh, we would first have to see if the elected board is interested, which I, I, I know Jesse has expressed interest, excuse me, Mayor Warren has expressed interest in CCA, um, but the, the, I don't know if he's fully understood that code needs to be in place to allow for it. Yes. And I don't, and the village might have existing code with CCA specifically. No, okay. So th there is like layers of code that would need to be adopted, such as a CCA, right. CCA and then getting a CC administrator. But right. this is something Lynn would be able to present to us, and then I would recommend following that presentation that Patrick take notes, that um, <laughs> Lynn would then perhaps have the opportunity to present to the, the elected board. Is there an electric board? Electric, electric, elected. Uh, excuse me, elected board. Elected yes, board. So the board. You mean the, the BOD? Yes, okay. BOD. Okay. All right, gotcha. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, uh, yeah, let's do that. Car before the horse? No, that's a little different. Uh, <coughs> if the town is, and you're working with the town mm -hmm. and its board on that, isn't the village better off to see you bring this and, 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 and to an end with, uh, with legislation that passes before we, the village goes in there? 
But, um, helpful. Yeah, helpful. It, it's helpful, sure. but this this code exists all throughout the municipality. Uh, excuse me, also all throughout New York State. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit more contentious here because much of New York State is comfortable with solar panels on ag land. Because of the value in which we see ag land out here, we had to, and model codes are written for the entire state. So this the language just was less um, appropriate for here. So there's been a little structuring, um, restructuring, but it's something the village could begin the process, um, especially with battery storage, which the town has already adopted. So first the town, the village could adopt battery storage code. Okay. And then most likely the town would finish up with solar, same thing, but they would also then see, need CCA legislation, which the town already has adopted years ago. We would want to hire a CCA administrator, which is not a code amendment. Uh, code amendment. This is an organization that does, doesn't make any money on the village. Couldn't we have a reciprocity agreement with the town on the CCA rather than put another uh, headcount on the payroll? Um, well, the CCA administrator would not cost us any money. They make money from the developer. When a development occurs, they're making a portion of off of the cent per kilowatt hour, and that it would be in the agreement. Um, but the, the municipality wouldn't be paying for that. Um, but the legislation has to be has to be adopted. Has to be adopted and, in order to go forward. Right, and then to answer your question, an IMA. I mean, while it may benefit the village, I don't know how it necessarily benefits the town. So the town, unless it opens up areas of the village that we may want to do a development, which an interesting point. There's an eight-acre parcel. Um, man, I don't off the top of my head. It borders the village on the northwest portion. It currently is a, excuse me, northeast portion of our municipality. It, it currently is a national grid site. And so NYSERDA, man. That's on West Prospect Street. Yes, okay. I knew one of us would know. Mm -hmm. So NYSERDA has a grant for $150,000 available called the Just Transition Grant with zero match. And those funds are to be used to create a redevelopment plan for um, a site that is uh, either no longer in use or is planned to not be in use for energy uh, purposes. This site has been identified that qualifies for just transition grant. So the town, because it's in the town's jurisdiction, we are trying to pursue this. So they would write a plan. We as a planning commission, as the village, would want to have comments and be a part of that discussion because that eight acre site could be very well the site of a renewable energy project um, that perhaps could benefit the village. So. It, there, you're right. There is some. Uh, it could also be a tree nursery, couldn't it? <laughs> we don't. Well, it could be anything. I, well, I don't actually, I don't know because we don't know the impacts of the previous use. So they could. It might not be able to be. Um, well, the, the, the town and the village went into buying a piece of property on North Sea Road and uh, uh, Aldridge Lane, across the street from McDonald's. I don't know how many acres are in there. Yes, and I, I know what you're referring to. I don't know either, though. And when it comes to tree nursery, there are, I assume, many uh, well-loved uh, landscaping companies out here who love to perhaps be a part of this. Mm -hmm. Even donations. even situated in like Moses Park has great areas where there would be great designation for a tree nursery in there. Well, uh, look, to, just to go back on the CCA, mm -hmm. um, perhaps. If you already have this in place in the town that you uh, uh, like worked on, mm -hmm. um, maybe that's an easy step to start and have that tackle that sort of small bite. Because if you have too many big bites, you won't yeah, get anything sure. done. We so let's we'll bring in Lynn, who also works for the town, right. and Lynn would be able to to answer that question on how an IMA could be formed. She's going to be far well, more first, yeah, well versed than I am. Sure, one of the aspects, but in terms of um, what the task, what the planning commission works on, you have to be careful not to have too many projects because you'll never get anything done. No. Um, and it may that, have term limits made it to the list. That one uh, is since you've already done it, mm -hmm. you can um, you can you can you Field can it. walk this with your eyes closed uh, for for the for the village, and that would be something to do and then you can build on it in 2023 with the CCA thereafter well that's just a thought I well, just keep well, it simple obviously Christian I mean it, it's all stacked right but the but the bottom is the legislation so so I could I can pursue this on my own I just want to make sure that the 
the Planning Commission is interested in this. And I am interested. So maybe we should. I, I think. We, I, I think yeah. We, so we all are. All in favor of of the Planning Commission adding this perhaps to our task force. Our yeah, our task forces and our and I and I will head this alone <laughs> because I I yes yeah I'm you know qualified to. Um, and we'll see and you how can it always happens. send the Board of Trustees a no action letter, uh, you know. Genius. Uh, Who came up with that? <laughs> <laughs> that was some strategic maneuvering. Patrick, you sure you don't want to continue to attend our sessions? <laughs> okay. Um, Christmas yeah. tree and holiday committee. Oh, I don't know. Isn't there one? Yeah, I think there is. Uh, there's no? a group that okay. handles that, Mark, right? Mark well, Parrish and the Chamber uh, of Commerce. And uh, huh? former trustee. Oh, uh, um, you know. I know I sent him a donation. Uh, Yoni. Yeah. Yeah, Yoni. Yoni. Are we comfortable Bill, Bill skipping Yoni. that one today for the sake of time and bringing it up at the next meeting? Yeah. We've, we got a couple months sure. between now and Christmas. Absolutely. Okay, updates on the board membership and appointments. Uh, <laughs> this might be something we talk about at the next meeting when Mark is present, if we're okay with that. Otherwise, I'd love to open this up. It, but this, this, there's no objection here. Well, I just have a question. Updates on board memberships and appointments, doesn't that go on to term limits? What board are we talking about? Well, we're a commission, not a board. board. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know. So, you know, this is a Mark 8.3 okay, comment. Issue. So let's wait for Mark. Okay. So let's, uh, unless right. there's a, any further objections, I, I would like to open this up to the public since they've Sorry, been patiently sitting here. I, I okay. think Mark was they just simply trying to ferret out if there's any updates, which we know there isn't any, in terms of reappointments of various <laughs> boards for people who are straggling along. Um, Mrs. Davini is one, mm -hmm. Mrs. Steinhardt is another, and there are many in the community who are waiting for the mayor to uh, do something that was expected on July 1st. Okay, so that, that's, that's what what's going on. Got that's it, got it. Okay. Nothing there. It just hasn't happened since July. Okay. Alrighty, so with that, um, we're open to the public comment. If I know we have a couple members from the public who, I don't know if you'd like to come to the podium and have something you'd like to discuss or have a topic of interest. Yeah, I appreciate that you guys attended the entire meeting and yeah. it's nice to see faces. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I got to practice my enough. comedy skit. Um, yes, <laughs> I I think we uh, you know, this might be something that's standing on our agenda. And when Paul and DMB Engineering has the time, they do routinely present. But um, we might have to be a little bit more clear as to when they're going to present in the future. So not to waste anyone's time. Not a well, we yeah, do appreciate having you. I was looking forward to that too. Patrick, do you have any further comments? This is your only opportunity after that. You're on the clock. Okay. So with that, does anyone on our board have any, excuse me, commission have any uh, further comments? Alrighty. Motion to adjourn. Our Next motion to adjourn. Yep. Uh, second. 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 Yep. All right. In favor. Aye. Aye. Aye.